You know, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, how do I make abstract drawings and abstract paintings? Is it something that I visualize in my mind's eye and then design out on the page? And my answer is no. I make abstract drawings and abstract paintings from process, different processes. It comes from a process really of expressing marks on the page then reflecting on those marks, trying to get it, uh, some insights, uh, intuitions, some expression from the inner artist, and then going back in and marking up the page again. So it's marking up the page, reflecting on it, marking up the page, reflecting on it. That's really kind of the basic process that I use. So the outcome, what the drawing looks like, I don't have any idea when I start the process. Every drawing is a new, <laughs> new experiment, an experiment in intuition, expression, I don't have any idea what it's going to look like. In fact, I really don't care what it's going to look like. I am not tied to the outcome of this drawing. I'm more interested in, into the process. Now, of course, a lot of people say, what are you saying, Bob, you are not trying to make a beautiful drawing? And I say, no, I'm not. I'm trying to make an authentic drawing. I want this drawing to feel authentic. It's all about feel. Does this feel right to me? Does it feel authentic? If it does, I feel very excited about it. <clears throat> anyway, I'd like to talk about the basics of creating abstract drawings. And this is just a basic uh, process that I think most abstract artists use, or abstract expressions, I should say, use. Uh, we're going to start here with the paper. I've got a 22 by 30. Uh, I think bigger is even better because you can get more physical with it. And this is a very physical kind of drawing expression. You know, it's all about drawing like you mean it. Get in there and mark up the page. I'm always breaking my crayons and it's always about energy and action. Anyway, and I like to put the, the paper roughly where my eyes are pretty much the center. Gives me a nice area to work in. The next thing I want to say is I want to stand back from this page. This is important. You want to stand back from the page far enough <clears throat> that you get a feel of the whole drawing or painting. If you stand too close, you know, it's, it's, it's very fragmented. So you want to really sense the whole painting. So you want to stand back far enough where you get, that, get the holistic picture of this painting or drawing. Now, of course, that's going to vary. If it's a smaller, you know, drawing, you're going to be closer. If it's bigger, of course, you're going to be back further. But I think that's very important. So this, where, this is where I'm going to work from, basically. I'm going to start and work from here. So I've got, the, I've got the paper, I've got where I'm standing, I've got my materials ready, so I'm pretty much ready to start drawing. One other thing I want to do here, though, is I want to get myself out of my head. Most of our time, where's our consciousness? It's all up around our head. We're thinking, we're the critical mind, you know, something we have to do tomorrow, uh, you know, somebody got us pissed off at work yesterday. Uh, we're all always up in our heads. We're never in the moment. This is a type of drawing process you want to be in the moment. And my way of getting there, of getting balanced or centered, is breathing. I'm going to breathe in through my nose, down to a spot that's roughly two fingers below my navel. It's kind of the center of the body. As I see it, I can start to feel my consciousness coming down and also relaxing. So I'm getting ready to start. So I'm going back to my starting position. I've got my crayon in this case. And when I feel that urge, that hunch, I'm going to go in. And I'm going to step back. Now, I'm sure you notice a couple of things. Number one, I work very quickly. Number two, I don't stay in there long. Number three, I didn't put any marks on the page. I like to do what, I, what I'm going to call a practice run, a practice drawing. And the reason I do that is, for one, one it, it, it kind of loosens up your intuitive muscles. And Two, it allows me to really be aware and conscious of my expression. Because as soon as I put this crayon on the page, my mind's going to start to, or my energy start to go up to the head, and I'm going to become um, critical. So it's kind of like a, a, a practice swing in golf. I taught golf for over 40 years. I'm a golf professional. And a practice swing allows you to be conscious of your swing conscious of the swing and, and the expression of feel the swing without the ball getting in the way. And it's the same thing here. I'm being conscious and I can feel my drawing expression without 
worrying about if it's any good or, or, or getting the critical mind involved. Anyway, so I think I'm ready to actually start to really draw. I'm going to step back. I'm going to focus on my breathing, get myself ready, and when I feel that urge, I'm going to go in. I'm going to step back once again. I'm working very quickly. Um, I don't stay in there long, and of course, I'm, I'm sure you've figured out the reason for that is I'm kind of always staying a step, two steps ahead of the critical mind. The longer I stay in there and, and draw, the, the chances are I'm going to be, oh, I don't like this. Is it any good? What can I do with it? So <clears throat> we want to stay away from that. We want to really let the body express itself. So next process is I'm going to step back here, and I'm going to kind of reflect on this. What do I sense? What do I feel? Do I want to go back in again with the crayon? Do I want to change materials? Uh, do I want to do some editing? There's some lines I don't like. So I'm going to get a feel for it. In this particular case, I'm going to go back in with my crayon. And when I'm ready, I'm going. And I'm going to step back. Now, a lot of people will say, I don't feel anything. I don't get any urges. I, I, you know, and that's okay. You can't go wrong. Just go in and take action. And the more you engage in this type of marking it up, reflecting, feeling, marking it up, reflecting, feeling, you're going to engage the inner artist or the inner mark maker, the inner tuition, whatever you want to call it, and you're going to start to develop a dialogue. And it's an amazing feeling. Sometimes I'm in here and I feel like my hand and arms just jumping around without, where did I come from? It's like someone else is doing it. It's very exciting. Anyway, so I'm going to step back again, and I'm going to look at this. How do I feel about it? Do I want to go back in? Do I want to do a little editing? In this case, I'm going to do a little editing. So I'm going to get some, some white paint. I like to use gesso, which is a uh, medium that's typically, typically used to prepare a, a paper or a canvas for drawing. And what I like about gesso is it's very kind of sloppy. You can draw, you know, you can just slop it around here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just taking out some of these things very quickly. Very much the way I did when I was using the crayon. Now, I'm going to reflect on this. What's my next move? Is it changing materials? Is it going with the same the crayon again? What am I going to do? Am I going to use color? I'm trying to get a sense of this. Of course, I'm doing a lot of talking here, so I'm probably up in my mind, but I'm going to try to breathe, get a feeling. I'm going to go in with some black paint. This is also gesso. And uh, I'm just going to go in quickly, the same way. And I'm going to step back. Now, I'm going to try to get a sense of where this, what's the next step. And, and this is basically the process that I'm going to use throughout the, this drawing. Marking it up, reflecting on it, marking it up, reflecting on it, until I feel that I finally reached that point where the drawing can't be enhanced anymore. And of course that's a big question in drawing. How do you know when this drawing is, is done? And my answer is, well in theory it's never done. You could go on marking and reflecting and editing, you know, on and on forever, <laughs> so to speak. But there comes a time when a drawing reaches its peak, I think. It's kind of like a bottle of wine. A good bottle of wine starts off young and it's very tannic and tart and it goes, gets better and better until it reaches its peak when you really would love to drink it and it kind of goes over the, over the hill and it starts to get worse. Now, a drawing doesn't get worse, it changes. But you get a sense after a while you, you've enhanced this drawing as much as you can. Any more enhancement, it's going to go over the hill. And of course, 
How do you do that? Well, it's feel, it comes from experience. I mean, I've made a lot of drawings where <clears throat> I've gone over the hill, I've gone too far, and I've, I've, in many cases I've changed it to something else. But don't worry about that. It's okay to make mistakes in this drawing process. In fact, you want to make them. Invite them in. The more mistakes I make, the more I'm learning. So I make mistakes all the time. You know, people say, I, I, you're, you're making terrible drawings or don't you care what it looks like? And I, I, I don't. I don't. I get in there. I'm more interested in the process. This is merely the outcome. It's kind of like a, a, a ticket that shows I went to the ball game or the theater. So the process is really what's important to me. Anyway, I hope I've uh, whetted your appetite on going out and getting some materials and starting abstract drawing or painting this process yourself. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's very rewarding and I, I think it has a lot of value to it because it's really working your inner feelings, inner artist intuition. It's something that we don't really do a lot of. We're mostly in our heads. So anyway, get yourself some materials, have some fun, and draw like you mean it.